very good morning you know every saturday we have this facebook live session from 11 to 12 on all aspects of human behavior and then traditionally for the last maybe 20 25 years we have been having this third thursday talk at 10 o'clock every month so what happens is that we sit down and discuss what should be the forthcoming topics and there's a lot of suggestions ideas discussions all these things happen sometimes we are not able to come to a conclusion sometimes we start pulling each other in two different directions saying no this will be good no that won't be very good we'll do something else and so when i was observing all that i said one of the things that we need to do and also share with others is how to take decisions so how to take decisions to decide what topic to have this talk on and therefore how we came into this topic of today on the surface to many people it may not look very great decision making yeah, i have to take decisions i take decisions what's so great about it but you know that even who uh, made decision making as one of the 10 basic life skills required for uh, you know, a good life and obviously what who brought out more than 20 years back was based on extensive research it was the decade of mental health for almost one decade 10 years uh, you know surveys were done in different countries different types of people, different age groups, different education standards. And then they narrowed down to these tens of life skills of which decision making is one of uh, them. The more we learn uh, decision making, the easier life becomes. And we can move ahead with any type of hurdles, any type of you know, roadblocks. Anytime we come to a crossing where we have to decide whether to go left or right. So that is the reason why we are here today to have a quick overview and some very practical tips on how decision making should be uh, done. Let's start off by uh, understanding that uh, when we are small, you know, babies, they take what are known as impulsive decisions. A baby's life goes not year to year or month to month or even day to day it goes moment to moment at this moment if i am hungry the baby says nothing else in the world matters i am going to scream my head off till that angel called mother comes and feeds me and once i am my stomach is full i don't care what happens to the rest of the world i am relaxed maybe i doze off that's how we all have begun our life by taking what we call as impulsive decisions. Right now, I need to be fed. Right now, I need this. I see that toy. So I will turn over. I will crawl. I will go and get that toy. The moment I get the toy and I'm fulfilled with it, enough. Then I take another decision that is maybe I should turn around and go near that window and see something. Or maybe I should try to get up and uh, uh, walk like everybody else is doing. These are the type of decisions that we make in our early life. Subsequently, what happens? Subsequently, we realize that life is a little more complicated than what we thought. Take, for example, the baby has grown up a little more. And the baby is feeling hungry and the baby starts crying. Mothers, by the time, let's say, a second sibling has come. And that little one is just a few months old and mommy's full attention is towards that little one. So this fellow, when he screams, saying that I am hungry, mommy says, Hitch, keep quiet. Baby has to be fed first. It's okay. You, you can do without food for another 15 minutes. Keep quiet. That is when the baby little fellow realizes I have to learn decision making. Supposing I keep screaming my head off. Do I get food faster? Does it get me the result that I was looking for? Supposing I go and start whacking mummy or biting her leg. Do I get results? Supposing I give up and I just sit down 
morose and saying, oh, see, I'm hungry and mommy doesn't care for me or something like that. Then what happens? So we start learning decision making purely by experience. If I make a racket, mommy gets angry and she further delays my food. So I think it is wise for me at this moment to keep quiet and wait for some time. I have to take that decision. And when I see results coming out of the decision, I get reinforced. So some of the simplest and basic decision making skills that all of us have learned are purely from experience. But here comes a very important thing. The more we encourage children to take decisions on their own, the better we are preparing them for their life ahead. When they become adults and when they take up responsibility or when responsibilities thrust on them and they have to take certain decisions, how we help them through the growing process makes a lot of difference. Time and again, I keep reminding parents, any adults who are in charge of children, that whatever small, small things you are doing, encourage the child to take certain decisions. And good decision making lays the path for autonomy. What is autonomy? Self-reliance. I am no longer dependent on others. I am autonomous, as they say. I can handle things by myself. Isn't that what we are supposed to do with children? To make them responsible, to make them autonomous, to make them feel mature enough to balance their lives with others. To do that, a very easy, very simple uh, way, which if we start consciously doing and practicing, slowly, 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 it becomes second nature and we don't even have to put an effort to it. That's what I keep reminding adults who are interacting with uh, children. A simple thing like you have to change the clothes of a little one and you go and open the cupboard, you, you see two t-shirts, you see the green one and the blue one and you pull out the blue one and say, come on, wear this. Instead of that, if you could spend 10 or 20 seconds to show the blue and the green to that little child and say, which one do you want to wear? It's a hard decision making, is it, between blue and green? And I know better because you know that a green one is not properly ironed and the blue one will be more suitable. That's why I pulled the blue one. Yes, you have solved the problem for that moment. But when you solve the problem for the moment, you are not empowering the child to start taking his own decisions. The equivalent of that, since you are talking about small uh, children, is a child who is crawling on all fours. He has not yet learned how to walk. He sees all the people around him. They are all standing up and walking. Why should I keep walking, you know, crawling on the floor? I also want to walk. So what does he do? He makes that attempt. He catches hold of something and slowly climbs up and comes into a standing position. Then he lets go and starts walking. Now you are the adult in charge of that child. You are present there. Do you tell the child, stupid fellow, you don't know how to walk. Why are you making that attempt? And if you fall down, you'll start crying and I'll have to come running to you. And I'll have to take care of you. It's better you walk on all fours. Would any responsible adult say that? No, no. We tell the child, come on, get up and walk. The same thing needs to be done in every aspect of a child's growth. Anything that the child has to do. As the child grows up, we often complain about children who are not interested in studies, don't want to do their homework or something. Here again, if you give them choices, remember that all human beings and more so children want to have the pleasure of taking their own decisions. 
somehow you always feel very nice when you are allowed to take the decision, isn't it? In fact, to the extreme that when you do not want to give any alternative to a person, you can work out in such a way that you offer two or three alternatives, all of them leading to the same path which you want the person to take. Even that can be done if you are a little sharp. There is a phrase for it called Hobson's choice, H-O-B-S-O-N. I won't elaborate it. Nowadays, Google auntie is there to give you all the details. So you can ask her. She'll tell you what is a Hobson's choice. But it's a wonderful tool which people use to enable somebody who wants to feel independent, wants to take choices. But you know that there's only one thing which needs to be done. You do not want to explore any other alternative. So you give a Hobson's choice to the uh, uh, person. In a lighter uh, uh, vein, there was this young man who had joined to become a priest. Now, he had a rigid regimen. He had to follow all the rules from morning to evening. He had to do all the prayers and whatever uh, studies and everything. Now, this boy had already become quite addicted to cigarette smoking. He couldn't do without smoking. He had to have every now and then he had to have a cigarette. So one day he went to his spiritual father and said, Father, I have this craving for smoking. So when I am doing my prayers, can I smoke? Father said, nothing doing. When you are doing your prayers, focus on the prayer. What do you mean smoking while you are saying a prayer? No other distraction. You must only pray. Okay, Father, he went away. Then he went to another superior, spiritual superior. And he asked him, Father, I have this habit of smoking regularly. I wanted to ask you, when I am smoking a cigarette, is it okay for me to pray? The priest said, of course. You can pray anytime, whether you are smoking a cigarette, whether you are doing anything, you can uh, pray. You must pray, in fact. Thank you, Father. So when I am smoking, I can pray. When I'm praying, I cannot smoke. That is what is meant by a Hobson's choice. So what I want you to understand is that even where you feel that, no, this person is not capable. And you know, this is not restricted to children. I've come across so many bosses who tell, I have this subordinate who is not capable of taking decisions. He's a stupid fellow. He really doesn't know how to go about it. If I start giving him uh, autonomy, if I start giving him the freedom to take his own decisions, he will mess up. No, it doesn't happen uh, that way. You have to understand that if this person is incapable of taking the right decisions, the only way you can empower him is to give an opportunity for him to take a decision. If he doesn't do it, it's like the child who was never given an opportunity to get up and walk. And now he has become one year, one and a half year, two years, two and a half years old. And you're saying that, no, he still cannot walk because you did not give him that opportunity. He had to get up. He had to take a few steps. He had to stumble and fall down He had cried and he even got hurt once or twice. But he again got up and he started walking, isn't it? The same thing applies everywhere. I have seen in corporate setups, for example. There are these bosses who say that, no. I am the only one who can take the right decision. My subordinates do not know. They are incapable. They are inexperienced, whatever words you use. Throughout what happens is that you keep taking the decisions. You are not empowering your subordinates. And they go into some sort of a, what do you call it, a comfort zone. And they say, anyway, boss takes a decision. So I should be bothered. Whatever he tells us to do, we will uh, do. And you can understand what will happen. If a situation arises where you are not available to take a decision and that subordinate has to take a decision, what happens? That person finds himself totally incompetent. Children grow up. They become adults. 
they have to move on in life. They have to take decisions. One of the things that uh, we do regularly, you are aware of that, no? this thing like uh, career counseling, aptitude testing. For children who have come to a particular point from where they have to take some very important decisions of their uh, uh, life, they need to move on to understand what would be the better choices for uh, them. How does one empower? I have got, uh, um, uh, you know, some very practical systematic tips which I'm going to give you. But just to set the path rolling, I'd like to show you a quick little video clip of how this young man explains how he wants to take decisions about his life. Have a quick look at this video and then I'll give you the practical uh, tips. So sorry. Technology is something that we are still trying to master. We have taken a lot of decisions to abide by what the new situation has taught us, but sometimes we succeed, sometimes we don't. It was a lovely little video which helps us to understand how proper decision making can be made. But as you saw, the audio was not at all clear. So I had to take a quick decision and stop it and tell you that, okay, let's move on to what are the practical uh, ways. The moment you realize that you have to take a decision, I think the first thing that you need to do is to check the deadline. There are certain decisions which have to be taken within a limited uh, time period. And there are those which are important, but you have time. That should be our first step. Those which have a timeline where you say that, no, I have to take this. Otherwise, it will be too late. There's no point in taking a decision tomorrow or next week or next month. It will be too late. Then you have to start focusing on that. Even at the cost that it may not be an ideal decision, but you must go ahead and start working on it and come to a decision and start implementing it. Those where you have time. And you know that I can take this decision tomorrow, next week, next month. I can, you know, spend some time finding out which would be the right perspective, or right alternative rather. The first thing to do in that case is to start gathering all the possible inputs and information. Now, here comes a very, very obvious mistake that many people make. They say, I am taking such and such decision. 
Okay. Why? Now, I have been advised to take that decision. I have been told that this will be the best for me. Fine. Who told you? Such and such very respectable person told me. Fine. He may be respectable, he may be elder, he may be a person whom you look up to and regard and respect. What is his knowledge on this particular topic or this particular issue where the decision has to be made? Is he an expert in that? Sometimes it is very obvious that he is not an expert, in which case, give him respect, give him regard, thank him very much for his advice, but move on, disregard what he has said. Sometimes it is not clear whether this person is knowledgeable or not. He claims to be knowledgeable. He's talking with a lot of confidence and saying, I'll tell you this, 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 you should do it this way. All you have to do is to ask him a few searching questions. A simple one could be, have you implemented something like this earlier? Do you know somebody who has taken such and such decision and has succeeded? Can you give me a few details about that person? You need not disclose his identity if it is confidential, but just tell me how you advised him and what he did and what uh, eventually came out of it. Thirdly, what is your source of information? Where did you get that uh, from? You will be amazed how much data, information, <laughs> advice floats all over the place almost like that Chinese whispering circle. Somebody will come and tell you, this is absolutely the correct decision I have decided. How? Because Mr. X told me, Mr. X is a great person. He is old, he is wise, he is experienced. Right. Now, what is it that Mr. X uh, uh, told you on what basis? When you explore a little bit, you will find that he himself was told by somebody else. Now, what is the credibility of that somebody else? He was told by somebody else. My colleague Purnima very often uh, recalls a colleague that she had long ago when she was working in the corporate uh, world, a receptionist. The moment somebody would walk in, she would call that person close and say, ah, you know what happened? So somebody would think that maybe something has happened and the poor thing, she seems to be very upset and uh, uh, yes, what happened? And she would say, you know, my sister-in-law so-and-so, no? Yeah, you have spoken about your sister-in-law. What happened to her? No, no, no. Her husband's cousin brother, so-and-so. Okay, husband has a cousin brother, so-and-so. What happened to him? His nephew, you know. Huh? Okay, his nephew. What happened to him? He has a pet dog. Okay, he has a pet dog. So what? That pet dog is not keeping good health. Now, what are you supposed to do about it? Now, this is in a lighter vein. But this is what happens very often when people start off with so much of authority, so much of force i will tell you this is the right thing you have to learn how to sift and distort and that has now become a big science called data sciences data analytics because we are now living in an information era right so we need to start sifting information that is of course done at a big level but even at an individual level you can do it the second point that you need to understand when taking decisions is to learn to differentiate between facts and perception. Somebody who says, I feel that such and such thing is better than that. Somebody else says, I have tried out this. I have found out the outcome of it. I have found out A, B, C, D analytics and details of it. And Based on that, I am you know, convinced that this is the right thing. So always question yourself that whatever inputs you are getting, is it a fact or a perception? One more simple thing about uh, decision making is to ensure 
that when you need to take any important decision, you are not highly stressed out or you are not in a very worked up emotional stage. If your emotions are running very high, if you are under stress, inevitably you take a wrong decision. You take what is known as an impulsive decision. There's a difference between impulse and instinct. Remember that. I am a proponent of instinct, gut feeling. I always tell people, before you take any important decision, do give some credence, some importance to what your instinct or your gut feeling says. But contrasted to instinct, which is deep, which is persistent, which has got some strong inner meaning in it, there is also this thing called impulse. Impulse is a momentary thing which comes when you are feeling very worked up, when you are under stress, when you are, you know, emotionally pulled into some particular direction or something of that uh, uh, sort. Do not get biased by previous experiences. Change is coming in so fast. What was applicable yesterday is not applicable today. So many people say, 10 years back, I tried it out. It didn't work, so it's gone. A parent tells the son, yes, I was also a very creative person. I was an artist. I wanted to become an artist and make a career out of it. But then I realized you can't make money out of drawings and art and all that. So I gave it up. It may have been 100% true at that time. But it may not be true at this time. Situations are changing so fast that if you get Influenced by earlier experiences, either yourself or somebody else's, you may lose out on some very good opportunities. The other thing that you need to ask yourself when you are taking a decision is that are you going to enjoy what path you are choosing? Never ever let go of that. And that happens when you succumb to what I keep on reminding, the herd mentality, H-E-R-D herd. When you take a decision saying everybody is doing it, so it is good. Every now and then you'll be amazed that a scandal breaks out in the media about a Ponzi scheme. You've heard of Ponzi schemes. Some person comes up and says, you put your money in a bank fixed deposit, you get 6%. You put it in mutual funds, you get 8 or 10 uh, percent. You put it in real estate, it may or may not uh, grow and expand uh, 10 years down the line. You deposit money with me and I will give you 24 percent. Wow. Sounds so impressive, no? Now, why should a person pay 24 percent when banks are paying 6 percent? Does that question come to you? Yes, it does. No, 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 no. I, I don't think, you know, how can he raise up uh, more than 24% to keep his own profits and his own expenditure and pay 24% to the depositor? It doesn't work out that way, you say. Then you know what happens? Some friend of yours calls up and says, I have invested in that Ponzi scheme. Then another one, then another one. And before you know it, you have one of your friends coming in and saying, Come on, yeah, you must invest. I've already put so much money in it and I'm getting monthly returns and you must also do it. Possibly why that person is doing it is because he's getting a commission. Or even if he's not getting a uh, uh, commission, he is stuck in it. So he wants to bring all his friends, like how an alcoholic always goes about chasing his friend and saying, you also come to the bar. You also come to the bar with uh, me. So one thing that is very important is Never allow yourself to get pulled in just because everybody is doing it. There's a proverb which says that if you repeat a lie hundred times, it becomes a truth because of the way people think. But I want you to break free from that. Now, along with that, 
there are two very important messages that I want to give you. One is about this concept of programmed and non-programmed decisions. The other uh, thing uh, is how do you convey your uh, uh, decisions to others so that you take people along. These are two very important aspects of decision making and I am going to talk about it and explain to you in detail as they say in the TV serials, break ke baad. Yes, Sally, go have your chai and come. So I will just uh, let uh, our viewers know. So yes, decision making a very, very, very important uh, and empowering skill that one can, uh, uh, you know, gain, attain. Um, what happens is usually like Ali was saying that, you know, when you are down and out emotionally, you're not able to think rationally, think straight. That is when you can use professional help a counselor and here as you know in banjara uh, counseling is free so anything that you are uh, you know bothered about and all of us go through that i mean even uh, when i'm confused i rush to uh, ali or go to one of my uh, buddy counselors we all need because that time we are so emotionally uh, feeling uh, that we will not be able to make the right decision so yes why not take help help from somebody who's you know there for us so banjara offers this free counseling for anything that you want to discuss with us, whether it is job related, relationships, and more importantly, uh, you know, aptitude uh, and, uh, you know, where uh, my child can, uh, what career option my child can take and all of that. So anything that is kind of, you know, you need a little bit of support, hand holding, scaffolding, please reach out to us. Uh, Banjara offers absolutely free counseling on all these things. And when we are talking about children, especially, you know, uh, as a parent, you always go by your gut feel or what you have, you are imitating from what you have learned. But why not learn it, uh, you know, properly? It's a skill like uh, Ali was mentioning. WHO has decision making as one of the most important life skills. And not just deciding for the child, but helping the child to decide for themselves. So this program will help you with a lot of uh, life skills that you can inculcate in your children or all other aspects of uh, bringing up your children as a parent or as uh, any significant uh, adult, a teacher, uh, or anybody who's closely working with children. So uh, this is a program. A few more days uh, are left to register. So uh, you know, already uh, we have started off with the program. But uh, yes, there are a few seats available. So please reach out immediately, and uh, we'd love to tell you more about it. So yes, these are the things I thought I'll update you with. And many, many happenings, many other things which go on. Please uh, keep checking out our website uh, and you will find all the latest information. Yes, it's locked down, but a lot is happening in Banjara. So keep yourself posted. Do check out our website for all the latest updates. You learn probably a lot of aspects of human behavior, right? So, yes. So, Ali. All right. Yeah, I wanted to tell you another important uh, topic, which Ali is going to be uh, taking up this coming Saturday. Very, very sensitive topic. And uh, many are reaching out uh, because this is a time which, uh, you know, people need that kind of emotional support. So, yeah, this is a topic which we thought, uh, you know, we'll take you through. And, and uh, Saturday, as usual, 11 to 12, uh, please log in to our uh, website. And we are going to be covering this sensitive topic. Uh, death right so uh, we will uh, meet you there again on uh, saturday so uh, do come in uh, ali will be taking us through this so that's what i thought i'll let you know uh, just a little clarification to what sima said uh, the poster was put up with one big word and single word death written on it. I don't know how many people will get scared looking at that uh, poster. So I'm not going to just talk about death. I'm talking about facing bereavement and helping people go through bereavement. As you know, innumerable people have 
lost somebody very near and dear to them because of this second wave of COVID. When you come across this news that a friend, a neighbor, a relative has lost a dear one, how do you reach out to those people? That is going to be the prime focus of my Saturday discussion with you all. And I would like you to come prepared to raise up certain questions or your doubts or something. Let us all make this effort how to you know, be there for people who have been through this tragedy of uh, death. And remember, it also empowers us because death is so inevitable. Even if this COVID business gets completely over and everybody is vaccinated and there are no more virus, death will still continue, isn't it? It is a reality of life. With that, let me move on to this very important thing called programmed decisions and non-programmed decisions. You see, we are trained into certain things, right from home, our lifestyle, whatever we are used to be doing, the way we interact with our near and dear, our family members, our traditions, our uh, rituals, our attitudes towards things, uh, how we show courtesies to people, what are the methods that we uh, adopt in various uh, situations. These are all what we call as programmed decisions. Now, in let us take IT language. We have innumerable programmers, right? They are the people who work with algorithms and they are the ones who make computer programs. There are com then programmed uh, you know, software testers and there are so many such things are happening in the IT world. And, and COVID or no COVID, uh, you know, the IT uh, field seems to be booming. There seem to be one uh, uh, area where at least financially, most of the people have not been, there are people who have been affected, but majority of them have not only not been affected, they are doing better working from home and they are prospering since uh, last year. But what happens if it, this is, uh, when we say program, uh, IT programs run on a binary system, one and zero. Sometimes we start thinking of life also in black and white. Yes or no. Approved, disapproved. That is what I want you to break free from. People who are used to leading only one type of life, when they are shaken up and when they uh, find themselves in a situation where they have to take a decision on something which they have never faced, that is when they flounder. They just don't know how to handle those situations. A lot of people who are left brained, analytical, critical, sequential, methodological, they can take any decision which comes under the ambit of one and zero. But they cannot take decisions which involve things where there is no precedent and there is no rule book. Most of them being decisions with regard to human relations. You cannot use logic when it comes to close relations. And that comes out of learning non-programmed decision making. So if you are in a particular field, you may be a legal person, you may be a teacher, you may be a designer, you may be whatever profession, whatever activity you are uh, uh, doing, please get involved in doing things which are away from what you normally do. If you are an accountant and a finance person and you are always dealing with numbers, move into a world which is outside the box, where numbers and one, two, three and all that doesn't matter. The more you practice non-programmed decisions, the better you will be to face life. The second thing, as I told you, I will be talking about is with regard to what you do after you make your decision. You can tell your decision to others or you can sell your de uh, decision. There's a very big difference between the two. 
nobody wants to be told what to do but if you sell your decision you will find that you are taking everybody along with you people enjoy being part of your team people come and give you good constructive suggestions people contribute to moving towards the goal which you have uh, set because you have sold your decision you know in the legal parlance lawyers talk about it is not enough that justice has been done it should also appear that justice has been done if i am having a dispute over a property or over money or something and i go to a court of law and the court of law gives a judgment sometimes the judgment may be to a great extent in my favor but somehow if i feel that is not enough why did that other guy get so much then what happens i am not happy so that is why they say that it is not enough that justice has been done it should appear that justice has been uh, done now how do you do that i told you the simplest way is to sell your decisions if i have taken a decision which involves other people it could be at work it could be at home it could be family it could be anything now i have take, taken some sort of decision or almost taken a decision i feel out of all the options available to us this seems to be the most uh, suitable decision now let me see how do i get the involvement and the cooperation of all the other people involved in this whole process if i tell them i have explored i have found out and i think this, this is the best way to go about it should we go about we will go about doing this 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 the first reaction of people is why why can't it be done the other way around what does he think of himself does he do you think that this is the only right thing to uh, uh, do but if i sell my decision just try and recollect the last time when some very good very effective salesman sold something to you what did he do he used all the right techniques to ensure that you got convinced that it is in my interest to buy this i'm not buying because he is forcing me i'm not feeling compelled i think this is a good thing it will help me if i buy this service or this product that is what we mean by selling uh, decisions very interesting question why do people keep changing their decision these are the type of people who go by impulse as i was telling you a few minutes back even when there is time to take a decision they want to be done with it in a hurry they get very emotionally hyperactive and they say oh this is what has to be done i will do it right now i very often tell people that whenever you are faced with a slightly emotional or a slightly difficult uh, um, uh, situation wait before you respond count to 10 is the simplest thing that we tell very often these are the type of uh, uh, people you know who cannot wait so when there is a stimulus they respond immediately and then after some time they realize no this is not the right one i want something else and then they move on to changing their decisions whenever you identify that yourself or somebody known to you is constantly changing decisions please tell that person to follow these techniques that we are discussing today about decision making i go back to what i was telling you about children once this lockdown is over take your child to an ice cream shop where they display different flavors so you have this huge glass case and there will be some 10 flavors which are visible the child can go and peep and have a look at it you tell the child come on i will buy you the flavor that you want and observe the child if the child straight away says no i want vanilla only i always buy vanilla become aware that this child is not exploring this child will be stuck when this child has other options other alternatives opportunities to move forward he will not be able to do it 
So teach the child and say, yes, I will buy you the uh, vanilla. But before that, I want you to see the others. Decide again that none of the others are as tasty as vanilla. Go back to vanilla and come back. I, I don't mind waiting two minutes. And when he looks at all the flavors and comes back and again says, I want only vanilla, ask him why. Why is it that you don't like chocolate or strawberry or pista or whatever? That is how you are teaching the um, child. It starts from such small things. And once that child starts learning how to analyze, the child's decision making ability improves. Most of the bosses, Vikas says, enforce decisions rather than sell their decisions. And teams are afraid to question their bosses. OK, this was put very nicely by a youngster who said, me and my boss get along very well together. I laugh at all his jokes, whether they are funny or not. When boss cracks a joke, I have to laugh. So I laugh at all his jokes. And he laughs at all my suggestions. Isn't it typical of what Vikas said just now? But you can't change bosses. You can't argue or fight with the, them. But there is definitely something that you can do. And that was brought out beautifully in a TV serial long back, which said, yes, minister. In fact, I had the privilege of being very close to a very senior friend of mine who was a private secretary to a minister. I used to observe him very closely. I was a youngster at that time, so I was hanging around with him and I would even go with him inside the minister's chamber and all that. You know, whenever the minister would take this stupid uh, decision and force it down the, uh, the uh, subordinate or whatever it is, this man would follow the same technique. And this was much before that TV serial came in, mind, mind you. The first thing he would say is the equivalent of, yes, minister. And then he would build a logic system, an explanation which would go all the way around and say, sir, if you do it this way, it will be such a wonderful feather in your cap. And the minister would immediately change over and says, yes, I think that is the way I should like to do it. Sir, what a genius you are. You have thought of it. The stupid minister didn't think of it. So whenever you're dealing with an unreasonable boss, if you have the time and patience and inclination, there are ways and uh, means of doing it. OK, many a time one is on the crossroads, how to make uh, uh, this. And that's exactly what I've been talking uh, um, uh, about. Life changer decision. Don't do it in a hurry. People select their life partner impulsively without even analyzing and evaluating how many years I've been talking that. Premarital counseling is one of the most important things because there is no greater decision you take than you know selecting your life partner. And even there we take impulses. There are ways and means. I have even brought out a workbook on how to select your spouse and how to, even if you have selected your spouse, how to analyze what are the possible challenges that you will uh, face. What are the loose ends that need to be uh, tied up and the wrinkles that need to be ironed out? People don't want to do that. You can only take the horse to the water. You cannot make it uh, drink. Emma is asking, how do you cope with wrong decisions? First thing to do when you uh, find that you're taking a wrong decision is, as they say, cut your losses. It's like in the stock market, they say that if the share is falling, there are people who hope that no, it will rise again and they hang on to it and it starts going lower and lower. A wise person cuts his losses. I have invested 100 rupees in the share. It has gone down to 98, 96, 94, 92. Cut my loss, sell it for 92. I've lost 8 rupees. Maybe when it goes down to 88, 85, 82, 80, I will buy it again. And then when it comes up to some whatever level, I would have made some profit out of it. So the same principle applies for any wrong decision that you have uh, taken. Cut your losses, calm down, again start from scratch, the same you know step-by-step -step process that I have told you. I am uh, doing second year of medicine, and I want to take up art. I want to take part in social activities, but I'm scared to leave medicine. I'm scared I lose security. I'm finding it hard to decide. This is a very important decision, Arsha. I don't want to frivolously give you a one-minute answer. 
but as we have always been saying we are available to people like you who are at this crossroads and who are to take these decisions we do free counseling you are most welcome to get in touch with the, us my email id is alikwaja50 at gmail.com a l i k h w a j a 50 at gmail.com uh, uh, please write to me in detail where you stand what are the pros and cons what have you thought of so far to the best of my ability i will help you to take the right uh, decision okay khushboo says uh, how do you deal with a person who doesn't want to suggest or comment when given an opportunity because he or she is afraid of accountability yes there are a lot of people uh, you know who do that depending on what sort of equation or you know relationship you have with that person if you can gently tell that person the advantages of you know taking decisions or at least giving suggestion maybe in initially what you can tell the person is i take the blame i take responsibility whatever happens but i still want you to tell me what you feel about this particular uh, uh, thing i will not quote you to anybody else if it goes wrong i will accept that it was my decision or my responsibility so that way if you can encourage the person and once that time is over and the outcome of that decision comes out show that person yay you suggested this i implemented it and we succeeded so see you have the capability of doing it. build that inner strength in that person that confidence in that person because as you said he or she is afraid of accountability people will scold me people will hold me responsible i will get myself into trouble but that person will be in greater trouble if he or she does not learn the basics of decision making it is extremely important that you have to do uh, uh, that there are one or two other points if uh, as i'm waiting for the decisions i mean the uh, questions to uh, come in always whenever you take a decision no keep option b a plan b in mind in case this doesn't work out then what am i going to do you must always have some alternative some option in mind while i am convinced that this is the best decision and i am going ahead implementing it if something goes wrong and if i am unable to pursue it or if the result comes out negative i am ready with the second option i will immediately switch over to uh, that shobha says before taking decision i should think what am i thinking and what am i feeling is the, this is important <coughs> absolutely right uh, shobha that's what we keep on and on and on pushing into people saying that all the time keep reviewing what am i thinking what am i feeling emotions play a very important role in your actions and your decisions depending on what your emotional state is you will take that particular decision people you know often have taken very foolish decisions just because their emotions got the better of them you have come across big shots who are extremely capable who are in power and who have done great work but let's say they have a grown up child whom they want to promote and that child is totally incompetent but this parent goes on promoting and pushing that child with the result that both of them fall down now why does that happen it is this strong emotion that this is my child i have to promote my child i have to see to it that my child comes into prominence or power or whatever it is and this highly competent person who has already made a success of his or her uh, uh, life who has reached the pinnacle of success makes such stupid decisions because of which the whole empire starts uh, uh, crumbling this is what i meant by saying that while you should listen to your intuition your gut feeling the emotional angle of it but finally a decision when it is made should be made on the basis of something very logical which tells that yes i am willing to pay the price for it yes i know that i am getting emotional 
I want to help somebody who is very important uh, uh, to me. And I know that I'm going to suffer some losses in terms of finance, in terms of relationship, whatever it is. I don't mind paying the price. See, there again, I'm using logic to deal with my emotional state. So the final step when you are about to take that decision and say, this is the path that I have chosen and I'm going to work, uh, um, walk on that uh, uh, path. That last step should be a very rational, very logical uh, uh, step, taking into account the emotional uh, uh, factors. There are innumerable people who have taken emotional decisions because they believed in it and they have succeeded. When the whole world was going in one direction, they went in another direction. You know that famous uh, poem of Frost, which says that I was walking in the jungle. And at one point, there were two paths. One path was the one which was well trodden, meaning to say the grass and everything had gone away because so many people were walking on that path. It was very obvious that that is the path which most people take. The other one was a path less traveled or less trodden. I could make out that grass has grown, weeds have come, because not too many people have been walking on that path. But I believed in it and I took that path, the road less traveled, and I have never regretted after that because it was a thought out decision. Based on that one line of the road less traveled, that poem, the great Scott Peck wrote a book whose topic was the road less traveled. And that I consider to be something like a Bible of human behavior. It's deep. It is serious. You can't read it like a novel. Sometimes you'll get bored if you start reading it and you will give it up also. It doesn't matter. But there are such gems of wisdom with regard to human relationships, including decision making when it comes to the most difficult aspects of your life. And that is what I want you to understand. In conclusion, let me also talk to you about the most crucial time when you are faced with something which is totally unexpected, something which shakes you up completely. But it is so important that you have to take the decision then and there. You do not have time to go through all this process of getting information, evaluating that information, all these things. You have to take a decision then and there. When it comes to that, I think you should go by your instinct. Because you do not have time to apply logic. Somewhere your gut feeling. And if you have nurtured your instinct, your gut feeling, your sixth sense, you will find that that instinctive, that intuitive, and that very you know deep gut feeling. When you used that, you did make the right decision. Even if the outcome is not very favorable, you will not regret it because you took that decision with that firm belief that, yes, this is what I believe in. These are my principles, or these are my values, or this is what I uh, you know, believe uh, uh, in. And once you do that, it becomes a habit. And once you rise to the occasion, never run away from an important decision. I've seen people running away without taking decisions when it has to be done crucially. Once you start running away, you'll be running the rest of your life. Face it squarely, get across and say, yes, I am going to face it. Sometimes you may even make a mistake. Sometimes in retrospect, you will realize that, no, I took a wrong decision. I'm paying the price for it. But no price is too high. You will still realize that you have learned something from that failure. Failures are stepping stone to success. It is not important how many times you fell down. What is important is that did you rise up one time more than the number of times that you fell down? 
as long as you do that life is a continuous journey life goes on good things bad things keep happening enjoy the journey do not worry about the destination thank you it's been a lovely hour and i look forward to seeing you people on the, as usual on saturdays and then again on the third thursday of next uh, month and if things improve by the, then i am even looking forward to having a classroom session which we have had for years and years i am really yearning to see warm caring smiling human being sitting in front of uh, uh, me that is what i crave for and i am going to wait for it whether it happens next month or six months down the line it doesn't matter i am an optimist i will always be looking forward to it so have a wonderful time bye bye